Welcome back to Medrash Umaisa, sharing a story for this week's Parsha, Parsha's Vayikra, also Parsha's Zohar. There was a very um, well-known man who lived in New York, Rabbi Rama Coin, some called him Rami Coin. He was a businessman, a Talmud Chacham, and also a Moyel, who was uh, an expert in Mila. He wrote a book on Hilchas Mila. In the introduction to this Sefer, he told some of his history growing up in Hungary. And this is the story that he shared. He grew up in Pressburg, where his father was one of the heads of the community. Pressburg was a very illustrious community, the community headed by the Chasm Sofer and his descendants. And he said that after World War I, there were many refugees traveling from town to town, just looking for food and someplace to rest. These were Jews who came from eastern parts of Europe. They were known as the Ostjuden, the Eastern Jews. At night, in the main shul in Pressburg, so there was a gabai who was in charge of arranging meals for the different people who were there. He said his father gave the gabai an interesting instruction. He said, save me for last. I want guests, but I want to take the ones that are at the end of the list. Why did he do that? Because my father, he said, wanted the ones that nobody else wanted. These were Jews who unfortunately were not clean, didn't have the ability to wash themselves or their clothes. Often they smelled bad. Often they were infested with lice or fleas or other bugs. And he gave an order in their home, which was a very nice home, to the family, to the servants, to everyone, that no one was to even give the slightest hint of discomfort or make any comment that might make these people feel uncomfortable. He said if part of the furnishings I have to be burnt because they became infested with something. That's what we'll do. But we will take these people in and we'll treat them with kindness and honor. World War II came and Bavram became separated from his father. He ended up fighting with the partisans, a very fascinating part of his life that he wrote up in a separate book. And his father was taken to the concentration camps. After the war, he went on a search to see if he could find his father, if his father survived, and he did. He barely recognized him. He was a walking skeleton. And his father began to share with him a little bit of what he went through. He began with the following. He said, one of the most prevalent problems among the many sufferings in the camps is that everyone was infested with lice and fleas and parasites. He said, I never had one on me the entire war. He said, I believe that's because of the way we ran our house and the way we accepted those refugees. In this week's parasha, we learn about the Mizbeach, about the Korbonos. Chazal teaches us that a person's table is his Mizbeach. Just as on the Mizbeach, when a poor person would come and bring a Korban of birds, Chazal said that the smell of burning feathers is terrible. Nonetheless, that was done because it's beautiful for the Mizbeach to have the Korban of that poor person. The smell doesn't take away from that beauty. In fact, that entire process becomes part of the beauty of the Mizbeach and what's there. That Shulchan, which was open to these people in that situation with whatever smell, whatever bugs came along with it, was a true Mizbeach. Rabbeinu B'chai says that the very word Shulchan comes from the verb Lishloach, to send. It's a part of furniture in your house which is designed to send bracha to others. He brings a fascinating minig from the Jews of Provence in France, that when they would pass away, they would ask that their coffin be built out of the wood of their table, because that's such a central part of the Jewish home, a mizbeach kapara for all of us. So in this week's parsha, at a time especially when there are many Jewish refugees once again in the world, to remember the Torah's true sense of beauty, true sense of welcome, and to try to enable our tables to be a Mizbeach in whichever way that we can, and to be Zorche to the Kapara and the rebuilding of the Beis Amigdash from Herav Yamenu. Have a wonderful Shabbos.